Hello, I am your host, Rashawn Ellis, along with the chef, Mr. Anthony Wright. How you doing? What's up? Today on Urban Beats Radio 2, we will be interviewing award-winning Arthur and historian Mr. Frank Saquon Jordan. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Chopping It Up with the Chef. Chop, chop. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Chef, and I'm chopping it up. And I just wanted to take a step back today and sit and talk to you a little bit about finances. Not just your personal finances, but have you taken the time as a mother or a father, a brother, a cousin, sat down with young ones and helped them understand the importance of finances, saving money, why we save money, and the importance of saving money. Um, I'm a father, and I believe Ms. Rashawn's a mother. Mother, absolutely. And um, I remember growing up that my parents used to always say, put a little bit of money away in the piggy bank. Exactly. Right? Save. Save money. Yeah. But I never understood why. Hmm. I understood taking a little bit of what you get and putting away is good for later on. Right. I, but I never understood why. And one time I remember, actually twice, and it was in sixth grade, I was at Coral Reef Elementary, and I had a friend, his name was David Zimmerman. He was a Jewish, Jewish kid, right? And uh, we were best friends. And I remember spending the night over his house and his father sitting down with him, us, at the dinner table, talking about saving money. Not just saving money, but investing. At six years old, start young. I, I, I was blown away at that. I didn't understand it back then. But when I would think back when I got later on in life, I was, I was blown away at how powerful that was. At six years old, elementary, teaching your child the importance of money how to use it and what to use it for, and in, in the importance of investing now for later on. So, brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, cousins, friends, take the time with your loved ones, the young ones, and some of the old ones, and some of them are hard-headed. <laughs> but with the young ones, they're fresh. Take the opportunity to sit down with them. Help them understand what it means to save. Not just to do it, but why he or she should do it. What to use it for, emergencies, um, family matters, trips. Also help them understand the importance of taking a little bit of what you make now, investing it in something that you believe is important, whether it be the atmosphere or electricity. Yeah or whatever, whatever is important to you, find something that you believe in. And if there's an industry out there, find if there are stocks, coins, or anything that you can invest in, funds. Help them understand putting a little bit away now can help you later on as you get older. Because if you're waiting on the government, there's a good chance Uncle Sam isn't gonna have anything in his pocket, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. A few minutes, we're going to have Mr. Frank Zakan Jordan to put some knowledge on us. Welcome back. Our next guest is an award-winning author and historian who is here to discuss several of his new books. Please welcome Mr. Frank Zaquan Jordan. Hey, thank you, uh, Sister Rashawn. Thank Pleasure you so to be much here. Thank, thank you for being here us, with us today. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you, Brother Anthony. Thank you. Thank you so much. So can you tell us a little bit about where you're from? Um, born and raised in Brooklyn, okay. uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, parents, they were actually raised in uh, North Carolina. Um, and you know, back then during the 40s and the 50s, you know, there was a huge migration of Southerners going north. Um, going north, right, exactly, you know, for more work or, you know, some of them went up to Richmond, some of them stopped in Baltimore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some stopped in Jersey, gotcha. you know, but the ones that was brave enough, they went straight to the city. To the city, you know, gotcha. and that's what my dad did. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, awesome. So, Mr. Frank, mm -hmm. and what made you want to be uh, an author for black history, a historian in, in, in a way. Right. Um, 
one of the things I noticed when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, um, there were no libraries for wow. blacks wow. in my community, you know, in the Farragut, Fort Greene yeah, community. Yeah. There were no libraries. Uh, we had to actually go um, to Brooklyn Heights, you know, for, which was probably like about a maybe five mile walk, mm -hmm. you know, from our neighborhood up to the Brooklyn Heights uh, to a library to actually learn anything, to actually know what books were mm -hmm. outside of our school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so one of the things I noticed, uh, Sister Bashan, mm -hmm. Brother Anthony, that it was the books that were there, they didn't have people that looked like me. You know, right. and as a kid, I recognized that. You know, um, so when you go to a library back then, or, you know, visited or frequented a library back then, mm -hmm. you, you learn about history like George Washington and the presidents, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Franklin right, right, Franklin Roosevelt, right, right. And, you know, that kind of like, you know, deterred me from going to a library because you're learning about their history. Nothing was there for blacks. You mm -hmm. can identify right. with anything that they had in the library. Absolutely. That you could read that was about your people, your it, history. It, it, absolutely. And, and that was one of the reasons why I failed history in class because it was boring. I used to skip right. it because it, yeah. it was nothing being taught. You couldn't identify with anything. couldn't identify with anything. It was nothing exactly. being taught about our people. Right. So that's kind of boring to hear about, you know, George Washington, which he had slaves, you know, later yeah. on. I find, come to find out George Washington had over 500 slaves, exactly. Andrew Jackson, Thomas Jefferson. So. You know, that kind of like bored me, you know, a little bit. But, you know, in, in my research, I know like later on in life, you know, I found out things to be a little quite different, you know, in the role that we played in history, which oh, was major. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So what makes your research and books different from what most black scholars and historians and teachers write about and teach? Um, you know, the more that I traveled and the more that I've actually researched, and this is like in a short, um, let's just start with the Renaissance period. Okay. Um, they try to masquerade the Renaissance period in the 1400s like that's just something that was just art, you know, being displayed and, you know, just a lot of sculptures, you know, being displayed, mm -hmm. you know, they just pretty much. But when you look at the word Renaissance, it means to like redo or to rebirth right. or to renew. Yeah. So my question was, you know, even, you know, when you visit Italy and Paris, what were they rebirthing? What were they renewing? And why does all of the uh, art that had pigmentation or mm -hmm. brown painting, mm -hmm. why is it chipped? Exactly. Why is the noses knocked off? Mm -hmm. Why is the forehead scraped off? Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, so those are things that you got to ask yourself, and these were before the 1400s. So, it, you know, I mean, apparently it's something that they were trying to hide. Definitely. You know, as far as like the greatness of a certain people. So these kind of things kind of like, just piqued my interest, like sparked the interest. Sparked the interest. There you go, brother. Yeah. There, there you go. So, you know, when you go back to Rome and when you look on, like the, uh, you know, even Vatican City, or when you go into the steles and archives, you know, and when you look on the walls of the churches that's still over there in Greece and Italy, you would notice that they still have like those those real ancient paintings, Sister Rishon, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, of Christ and the disciples, of yes. Samson, uh, uh, King David, mm -hmm. and they're all dark people. They're all dark skin. They're all dark people. They're all dark skin. Right, with yeah. little chips off here and there, mm -hmm. little chips off here and there. Yeah. So, you know, this stuff is, now it's becoming fascinating mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why don't our people know this? Exactly. Right. And why aren't they teaching this in My schools? information we're missing. A absolutely, mm -hmm. a absolutely. So, uh, you know, it goes into uh, uh, another venture also, another conversation, like, why do you have to redo something and redo the original art? It was for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, um, to actually contain a whole nation, a mind of people. Mm -hmm. You have to make them feel like they're nothing. They didn't have take no part in history. Take away. There you go, Brother and, Anthony. And, and there you go. The greatness of them. Right. There you go. There you go. You weren't so the inventors. we won't have the concept of who we really are. That's right. Mm -hmm. We At, know our, our origin, absolutely. beginning, mm -hmm. where we started. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Bingo. So as an author, you know, you know, and doing the research and doing the study, you know, our people have this notion where a lot of our people, you know, it's like hearsay, you know, which grandmother didn't say, which grandfather mm -hmm. said, but our people never really take the time to go to and research it themselves mm -hmm. and actually say, okay, put in the work and say, well, is that true? Was was King David or Christ and Solomon, was that really black? Or oh, I'm just believe what oh, my grandmother yeah. said. But me for the last past 31 years, I have researched these yeah. things mm -hmm. and I have actually taken the time to travel and go places mm -hmm. and find this stuff to be very much true. And give mm -hmm. me information. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and let me just say yeah. one more thing too, is, is, you know, it's a difference, it's a difference between, you know, you have 
like a lot of uh, black men out here that represent, you know, certain things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may have like an African American movement and, you know, uh, you know, some men that may represent certain genres or aspects of what they believe. Mm -hmm. um, but this is not, you know, I'm not coming from an aspect of an angry black man mm -hmm. and, right, you know, right. some kind of Afrocentric, you know, thing. And, right. you know, he's just angry and, you yeah. know, and all, you know, and he'll just know. This is about knowledge. <laughs> this is about right. knowledge and this exactly. is about self-esteem. And the reasons behind why they did it will shock you. And like I said, to get the people the way that they're thinking today, black people in the mindset that they're thinking today, you know, you had to take away all the greatness from them. You understand what I'm trying to say? But contrary to belief, when we were being sold from, from Southwest Africa, actually, I'm gonna tell you like this, it was the French, it was the Arabs, and a lot of uh, African kings during the time of King Dahomey, they were selling actually carpenters, engineers, they were selling lawyers, they were selling doctors, yeah. and they actually knew exactly who these people were, and they were black Jews and Israelites. Mm -hmm. They were selling these people from Southwest Africa. Now, I'm gonna hit you with another point also, that they lie about also, since Rashawn in mm -hmm. school. They'll say that the so-called white man, the Europeans, that they sold and they uh, actually not sold, they actually taught our people how to read. That's a lie. How, they go, how, how are you gonna teach people how to read when they come over here and they engineered everything for you. The white man has never sat us down. There's no book that I've read, and I've read quite a few. Mm. Brother Anthony and Sister Rashawn, I've yes. read quite a few. Yes. Okay, there's nowhere in history to, or document in the history where you can find where the so-called white man sat us down and taught us how to plant, taught us how to grow, mm. taught us how to engineer certain things, taught us how to build, taught us how to teach. Fact is, when we came over here on the Chicago Station, we were speaking, you had some some of our brothers that were speaking Three over, different languages. there you go, brother, right. there, you go. there you go, there you go, but more than that, yeah. okay, you had scholars, you had the people that was, and they knew this, because you're mm -hmm. not gonna get someone to build up your house, and you're not gonna get an engineer, if that's the case, you can do it yourself. Exactly. You know, you gotta sit, and you're not gonna get somebody and say, okay, you know, to, to build your house, you gotta tell them how to do mm -hmm. it. No, the fact is, when they was actually, when they came over and handpicked us, over from Southwest Africa, the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, the planters, the, the deceptors, and all that, they actually knew what they were getting and bringing over in the cargo slave ships. So when America, when we came over to America, they put us right to work. They put us right to work. The Indians was already over here laboring and being Labor. slaves exactly. already, exactly, from the days of Columbus. So it's like they knew exactly, we built this kingdom for the Europeans. They didn't sit down and teach us ABCs. and this knew. is the Absolutely. They brought us here knowing, like, why would you go and fuck people that didn't know? You right. already knew what they had, what they already possessed, so you brought them here. And, to and, do the and work. how can you yeah. how can you teach a people who yeah. have already had some of the oldest recorded languages in written texts? Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. In the world, in what way do you think Black history is misrepresented? Oh, oh, how much time you got? How much time? <laughs> how much time you got? Hey, listen. Let's start. Listen. Let's start with the Renaissance period. I'm gonna just run a couple things down for you. Okay. Um, you got great guys. You got Europeans, and, and, and this is facts. This, this is facts. Okay. They have went around the earth, starting from the 1400s in the Renaissance period, and I wrote a book about it. Um, they went around the earth and masqueraded themselves as being everybody great in history. Um, Othello, Socrates, mm -hmm. uh, Shakespeare. Those are all black men. Black a lot men. of people, oh my goodness, black Shakespeare. Men. You got Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Oh, Beethoven. Mm -hmm. Those are all black men. Okay, so now all of a sudden, Shakespeare. now, you know, here it is 2020, with your kids getting school now, they get whitewashed images of great black people. Okay, and if this is something that's not taught, so now all of a sudden I know I I go on radio shows, TV shows, mm -hmm. and when I bring stuff out, they'll say, "Well, what difference does it make? It just oh, what difference does it make? What color? Yeah, it it, it makes a difference now a that I'm bringing difference. out that it's black now, but it was okay. And that yeah. you stole once he's white, it. right? It's okay once he's white. Nobody said nothing, Sister Rashawn. Yeah. As yeah. soon as you bring out facts, and even the Bible tells you that mm -hmm. Christ was black. Oh, it doesn't matter. But look, it mattered when he was white. Nobody said nothing. Exactly. As soon as you bring out the truth, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't. Nobody's Why are protesting. Why we worried about that anyway? Absolutely. That, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter, King. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. Why did you have a Renaissance period to go around and whitewash every picture if it didn't matter? Why don't you just leave the pictures alone? Yeah. Why don't you just leave yeah, alone, crazy. Sister Rashawn. Leave the pictures alone. Exactly. You know, and that's why you always see. When you go to Italy, which you visit it, mm -hmm. you'll see the sculptures that's over there. I'm sorry for going off a little mm, bit. The could. sculptures that's over there, you'll see those sculptures like they've just been made. They're brand new, mm -hmm. Brother Anthony. Oh, yeah. Like they're just brand new. You see the small anatomy mm -hmm. of them, right. you know, of the white man. You see a small anatomy, you know, and Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, they was given a commission, you know, and these sculptures are untouched. They look brand new. But when it comes to the black sculptures, the noses is chipped off. 
Mm -hmm. Painting is scraped off. They threw vinegar on them. Mm -hmm. Taught you being brown is wrong. And, you know, the dark mm -hmm. pigmentation calls you names. And, okay, everything that they say is bad mm -hmm. for us. Right. They try to do. That's crazy. We've had that conversation so with Fubu. Another book. Yeah. We've had that, con myself and Mr. Sean, we've mm -hmm. had that conversation before. You know, they love our music. Absolutely, brother. They love our dance. Absolutely. They swag. Love how, they, they love our swag. Absolutely. Right. They brother. love how we do everything. That's right. But they don't love us. That's right, brother. That's right. Isn't it terrible? That's right. It's terrible. This is just right. the, the, I, the, the Detest the, it, our it just, culture. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Makes my mind. Right. right. Yeah, right. that's crazy. It's Everybody want to be black it until it's time to be black. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, that the cop pulled over. Definitely, on. definitely. Like, right. Get pulled over. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I want to see who, I, I want to see the first European that want to be black when it's time to get hung. Yes. I, right. Yes, I want to see. You want to be black then? Right. No, not at all. As I take a step back, as I take a step back, while, while, while I was over in Italy, I actually had the opportunity to learn that, you know, many of the Italians at a certain portion, at a certain time in their history, absolutely, they were invaded by a group of people called right. Moors. Right, absolutely, mm. brother. That's right, that's right. You know? Right. And the Moors had ran them over. That's right. And many of the Italians, if you right. look at some of the Sicilians, right. they're as dark as us. Absolutely. Yeah. They're as dark as us. Yeah. And that's because of the influence of Moors. That's right. So. It's there, but of course, like most cultures, they would always like to show the lightest and brightest Absolutely. of themselves. A that absolutely. just doesn't make sense to me because we're all people. God made us right. in all different colors. Right. Right. I mean, we're different colors of right. a rainbow. So right. no right. one color is better than the other. Right, I, I got you, right, I got you, you right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me get to the next question. Um, so why do you feel it's so important for blacks in America to know and understand their past? Uh, self-esteem, you, you know, self-esteem, self you know, if um, when your kids go to school, you know, and, and when all of us, when we were in school, mm -hmm. you know, when you open up the book, you read about Dick and Jane, you close the book, you open it back up, you see Spot Run, you mm -hmm. see yeah. Mary, and everything is all just white face. Tom exactly. Sawyer. Right. Tom Sawyer, there you go, brother, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. uh, Judy Bloom books, you mm -hmm. remember that, brother, them Judy Bloom books, and, uh -huh. you know, the mystery, the Hardy Boys the mystery. Hardy Boys, Nancy the Hardy Drew. Boys mystery. Yeah. There, there you go, brother, there you go. So what they show us in school is just, you know, a form of white supremacy because to actually to captivate people's minds, you have to make them feel like they're nothing. Like you don't yeah. have no part of history. You're nothing. You know, exactly. you're just a slave. You know, you have no part and we did everything. We're the greatest people on this planet. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, even when you go back, you know, the guitar that was actually invented by a black man, refrigerated, elevated, mm -hmm. all black people, you know, anything that you can think of, stop cell phone, yeah. stoplight, cell phone, yeah. refrigerated car, yeah. you know, anything that you can think of that America has actually incorporated, you know, and into actually society. stole mm -hmm. into society, okay, and incorporated, they, it actually, when you go back and do the history and the research, it was actually invented by black people. Mm -hmm. It was sponsored, okay, mm -hmm. and it was invented, the genius, okay, where the platform and the mm -hmm. format came from, was from black people, and they know that. <laughs> and what's funny is, I believe him, I believe it's Thomas Edison. He had a black assistant yeah. mm -hmm. that, that nobody knew about, right? Louis Latimer. Louis Latimer. <laughs> Do you know that brother was doing all of his schematics? Absolutely. Now let me ask you a question. If you're creating all this stuff. He's an intern. Right? And he's an intern, mm -hmm. right? Or you really didn't give him any kind of credit to anything. Right. And this, this brother is doing your schematics, mm. your mathematics for your schematics and the designs for your light bulb and other things. Mm -hmm. how, how is that? I mean, how, how is it that you take the credit for it? Yeah. Right. You haven't touched any of the paperwork right. except to sign your name at the, name at the bottom. That's right. right, brother. Taking full credit. So for someone else really and truly, if you and take knowledge. a look back, yeah. did he really invent the light bulb? No. Did he? Right there. No. no. I got another, I, I got something else for you. That's a beautiful point. I got something else for you too. Mm -hmm. um, a guy by the name of Alexander Graham Bell. Bell. <laughs> there you go. He heard of what Louis Lattimore did, mm -hmm. hired him as an intern as well too. Mm -hmm. Louis Lattimore actually invented what we call the phone, phone. today. It was right. called back then, it was called a uh, telegraph. Telegraph. There you go, bro. Wow. It was called a telegraph back then. Mm -hmm. But as we know it today, it's called the telephone. But like you said, once again, no credit. They sign their name at the bottom of the invention, get it over to the patent company. This is what I did in history. Our people don't know this. Yeah. You know, so is it true that he did discover the bulb? Yes, he made the filament to light the bulb up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he make the, uh, uh, he made the phonograph as well too. He made the phonograph and the telephone as well too. But do we get credit for it? Not, not at all. The engineering of electricity.
electrical components. Right. That brother was a genius. Absolutely. <laughs> was a genius. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> got, got one more for you, too. What about, um, you got guys like um, the one at uh, uh, IBM. I forgot the brother's name. Um, but he actually made the first color monitor computer. Um, you got another brother um, that made actually the first gaming system that you had people like now Xbox. They mm -hmm. went and they just incorporated mm -hmm. because we're geniuses. We're naturally geniuses, like you mm -hmm. said, during the time of segregation. We get into that curiosity. There you go. Right. There you go. The curiosity we're born of that how right. things work. Absolutely. How do I make this? How do exactly. I get this going? A absolutely. 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 Mm -hmm. You have written six books. Six books about Black history. Uh, could you give us a brief description of a few of those books? Matter, matter of fact, I'm going to let I'm going to let Miss Rashawn give a couple of them and just. Okay, uh, okay, we can start off with, with uh, We Once Were Family, The Disappearance of Black Culture. Right, it's, it's, right, that's slowly and surely mm. disappearing. Um, today, wow. one of the biggest words that I know that I encounter wherever I go, mm. one of the biggest words is gentrification. Yeah, gentrification. Everybody want to know, mm. everybody going crazy. Gentrification, yeah. oh my goodness, my aunt. Gent gentrification, <laughs> what's going on? Oh my goodness, taking over the you know, oh my goodness. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got news for you. Gentrification started when Columbus came over and invaded and took the land from the Indians. Okay, that's when it really started. Not a doubt. Okay, it's been, uh, you know, it's been going on for a while, yeah. right? Moving them out. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, with that right there, what our people don't know, like I was explaining to Brother Anthony uh, early on, what our people don't know is that you had a president by the name of Andrew Jackson, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in 1830, he made a bill called the Removal Act. And what this guy was doing, he made a Congress bill, signed it and everything. You can go and look it up. And what he did, he made a bill called the Removal Act that actually legally, okay, uh, let the the troops, okay, and let the government and let the army actually remove the Indians from off their land, okay, and push the Sioux Indians towards the west, up towards um, up, up towards uh, North and South Dakota. Which mm. you go to North and South Dakota right now to this day, and you still got the original Sioux Indians living up there mm -hmm. in reservations. And let me tell you something like this too: mm -hmm. the reservations, you 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 would rather live up on the bridge. Okay, mm -hmm. then live in a reservation and, yeah. and you know, Europeans make it sound like, oh my goodness, we're doing them a favor. The reservation this is, is protected nothing. land for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and got them on alcohol and they're up there, they're getting mm -hmm. drunk, they're lying in the street. You know, they're living in uh, hot huts, you know, and they cornered off just a piece of land. It's a piece of mm -hmm. land that they don't want, yeah. you know, and at the same time, too, they're up there, they're poisoning them also. But in 1830, it was an act called the Removal Act, and that act is still in Congress today. Where is that? They can come in Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. and they can take say, hey, listen, we're taking this land. It's nothing you can do about it. Either you're going to take this money, you're going to take this money that we're offering you, well, they did that. or we're going to do it right. anyway. Whether mm -hmm. you take it or not, not we're going to do it anyway. Exactly. You can go to court. Mm -hmm. you, can have, uh, you can have Jamel Williams mm -hmm. that's in Congress. Mm -hmm. You can write him. You can write uh, uh, Bonquisha mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Williams okay, in Congress mm -hmm. yeah. and think that they're going to help you, but yeah. they use it for the Atlanta airport. Right. Mm. Okay. They use it for the Atlanta airport. Right. They took a section of homes in a certain area of uh, just off the airport, right. 285. Right. And gave people a certain amount of money. Said, there you go. Yeah. This is what we're going to give you. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave. You have no choice. Right. Because we're taking this land. Right. It's amazing. That's a lot of the projects in the city of Atlanta, like Grady Homes, Carver mm -hmm. Homes, eminent domain, pretty much. Mm -hmm. They come in pay people whatever they're going to pay them for their properties and get them out. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? You're absolutely right, Sister Bachana. Mm -hmm. Let me yeah. say this too, right? You know, you have like a lot of black neighborhoods that are like run down mm -hmm. and, you know, you have people that mm -hmm. petition for years. Hey, you know, we need Houses. better streets and we need better mm -hmm. this in our community. Mm -hmm. We need libraries. We need a YMCA. Mm -hmm. That stuff goes on deaf ears yeah. until you see white people, people come in the neighborhood. The community. All of a sudden Take now, the city of Atlanta. all of a sudden mm -hmm. now, all, the projects are gone. Mm -hmm. all of a sudden now, the <laughs> streets on. start getting lights. Yep. Yep. The streets start getting paved with tar. No mm -hmm. potholes. Right. All of a sudden now, good grocery stores selling oh, yeah. real. Oh yeah. Selling, Polished, yeah. Right. Selling real fruit. It's, it's all of a sudden. It's happening to my neighborhood. Right. All of a sudden now, yeah. there's Polished. supermarkets in there selling <laughs> real fruit. Bring real stuff schools, in that we didn't have before. Books, mm -hmm. libraries. But the neighborhood been there for the last past fifty mm -hmm. years, yeah. and this is stuff that we've been petitioning y'all about. Yeah. Why is that, brother? Exactly. Oh. Okay. So we want to go to the next two books. I want to ask you about uh, sure. the greatest show on earth. A little brief description of that. Um, a lot of our people don't uh, understand as far as like where a lot of stuff actually formed from mm -hmm. um, as far as like minstrel shows, mm -hmm. yeah. um, as far as like the exaggeration of certain paintings and um, advertisements, as far as like what blacks had to suffer through. Like mm -hmm. a, the minstrel shows, you know, were, 
you know, something back in the day where you had Europeans, they were making fun, yeah. you know, of blackface mm -hmm. comedy and of our mm -hmm. lips and our skin color. Yeah, Jim Crow. Jim Crow, there you go, brother, right. And, um, you know, in all essence and hindsight, actually they made fun of us, okay, just to make themselves look good. Mm -hmm. So, but when you look at the exaggerated lips and you look at the skin color and stuff like that, you know, to have pigmentation, that's the best thing that you can have. It protects you from melanin. all kind of, melanin, yeah. it's the best thing for you. You yeah. know, it protects you from skin cancer. It keeps you young. It right. keeps you young. 500 years of American deception. Right, that goes back to Renaissance period. You have guys like, uh, a lot of people don't know, Michelangelo, you got guys like Rembrandt, um, mm -hmm. guys, Picasso wasn't around then, but it was Michelangelo, Rembrandt, and uh, Leonardo da Vinci mm -hmm. um, that was paid a commission by the popes back in the 1400s mm -hmm. to actually redo everything, redo all the cathedrals, paint the ceilings, you know, uh, Moses being white, David, all the biblical characters, okay, white. Brother Frank, so um, three books that I was very interested in, mm -hmm. Not just the coincidence, uncovering the evil of America, KKK. Right, right. Right? And the holiday hustle. Okay. Um, uh, uncovering the evil of America, is it goes into ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, different food ingredients um, that are delegated towards black communities. Uh, let me just give you one. I'm going to say red dye. You being a red chef, dye. You, you, you being a chef, I know you know. Red um, dye, red dye um, is one ingredient, like blue dye and the dyes. Mm -hmm. If you eat enough of it, like black people, they love red velvet cake. Oh, yes. They love red. Yeah, you love it. it. Sister Rishon had some That's before the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, had, she had some before the set. Right. So it's <laughs> all right. So if you eat enough of the red dye, it sets on your liver. After mm -hmm. a while, it sets That's on right. your liver. You know, just like anything, anything of too much of anything is not, it's, it's not good for you, right? Not so good. if you eat enough of it, the dyes, and they try to put dyes in everything, like Coca-Cola soda and all that, mm -hmm. that's bad for you, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't even want to get into that. But it's, yeah, there around. you go, yeah. brother, there you go, right. So they relegate these things to the black community. Like when I was a kid, um, growing up in Brooklyn, we had a, a, a store called the Penny Candy Store. Mm -hmm. You know, they had bags and bags and bags and mm -hmm. bags of candy. Mm -hmm. You know, and as a kid, that excites you. Oh yeah. my goodness, yes. I can say five cent. You know, you know, but that is is in a circle, just like the FDA and just like the CDC. What they do, they work hand in hand together. The mm -hmm. FDA approves the bad food. Okay, the CDC they approve the bad medicine, and it's like a like let's just say for instance like Tylenol. Okay, mm -hmm. to get rid of a headache, you got to go to the store and you got to get oh the Tylenol it works. Okay, so let me go to store. Let me just keep continue to get more. Next thing you know, you're hooked on Tylenol. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a catch right there. Yep. We're body. Our bodies are made from the earth. We got to put the earthly herbs back in our body to heal. Our yeah. body don't it's recognize man-made yeah. medicine. Our yeah. bodies don't recognize Tylenol and Mitol, yeah. Nyquil. Our bodies don't recognize mm -hmm. that because it's man-made ingredients. Now, if it's herbal, like you have like natural garlic, mm -hmm. you have lemons. Mm -hmm. Okay, well lemon. Let me hit you with this. If you drink lemon water every day, and if you have like any kind of sign of cancer in your body, whether it's on a low level or a high level, but if it's on a low level from you just, you know, uh, breathing in the air every day or your favorite restaurant, and it may have like some kind of beginning signs of cancer, mm. cancer can't survive, and this is a known fact. I said this in Howard when I mm. gave, cancer can't survive when lemon is in your body. So what you're doing, you're alkaline in your body, mm. okay? Wow. And cancer right, right, can't right. survive alkaline. when lemon is in your body. Right. Cancer can't survive, it has no choice, it has mm. no, it, 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 lemon destroys can't cancer. Grab the whole, can't, can't grab a whole grab of it and it destroys it. And these are some of the things that I've written in the book. And like I said, with the CDC, what they, what they do, they have medicine for you. It's, it's almost like a catch-22. Mm -hmm. You have an ailment, you're sick, oh my goodness, you know, uh, you know, I got, you know, I got first stage of cancer and you go there, they make you worse. Yeah. Okay, they, they, they make you worse. They give you the medicine just to worsen just the condition. Just to take care of the symptoms sicker. and to keep you hooked on it. There you not go. Not to take care of the underlying problem. There you go. Make and they money. just make treat it, money. Sister Rashawn. They don't cure it. Yeah. We're going to treat, we're going to treat this element. Yeah. If they cure it, yeah. they can't make no money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, you won't have millionaire doctors. If they cure it, they're going to make money. Oh, yeah. That's the reason why now they're trying to get rid of farms. You know, they, they won't let people get... In Detroit, uh, I know I'm going on a tangent a little bit. In Detroit, yeah. uh, when the uh, Flint pollution, the water, mm -hmm. had got polluted uh, a couple of years ago, five years ago, something like that, um, they actually were stopping the residents. You had a couple of residents that were actually making device. You know how black people is, right. you know, they get up under pressure, they back up against the wall, right. they're gonna swim. They're gonna, do exactly. they're gonna swim. Back mm -hmm. up against the wall, they're gonna swim. Yeah. So you had residents that was in Flint and it got it caught. Then you had hundreds of them. They were actually capturing the rainwater. Rain water. Yeah. They were capturing the rainwater, making their own filters like, hey, mm -hmm. I'd rather drink the water that's coming straight from the heavens, mm -hmm. okay, rather than drink the poison water. Soon as the mayor found out, start finding them. You can't have this. 
Then wow. how you gonna not? It's free. Yeah. Right. How you gonna charge somebody for compressed air? You got you know compressed air shooting. You got a flat. You go to the gas station. Right. You gotta pay a dollar fifty for air. Dollar fifty for air for something that's free, Sister Rashad. Right. You understand right. what I'm trying to exactly. say? It shows you the yeah. diabolical mind of this yeah. guy. Right. You understand what I'm yeah. trying to say? You gonna charge somebody free for something that we're naturally breathing? It's like mm -hmm. anything that's gonna benefit us. Absolutely, and, like and, and to, to take off. the shackles off our ankles. Beneficial to yeah. them, but not to us. Charge them, yeah. right? Charge them, right? Charge them for charge them for air. You know, people, I mean, that's body crazy. air, right? That's and the holiday hustle. <laughs> well, that's um, I'm now mixed up on a couple of toes. Holiday <laughs> hustle. You got to understand the um, the even the history behind holidays. Mm -hmm. You know that 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 are celebrated by people like Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, that was like one of the most murderous days um, on the calendar. Actually, you had, you know, the, uh, Indians, the Indians, right, the Indians that was over here. You had certain guys that was coming over, you know, um, certain troops and mm. certain calvaries that was coming over, actually fighting Indians. And where the holiday actually came from, um, you had uh, General, you had General Custer and you had a couple more guys that came in with a brigade and they actually started scalping the Indians and they started like just taking over their land. So as a, uh, you know, as a result of that, they made fun of the Indians, you know, uh, they had the Indians go out, kill turkeys and come and serve them uh, as actually the turkey actually serves as a memorial of the mm -hmm. dead Indians. You know, the, tur the, the body of the turkey represents the body of the Indians, the uh, cranberry sauce represents the blood mm -hmm. and the stuffing represents the guts when they were stepping on the wow. Indians. You know, that's why you when, when you make mm -hmm. stuffing, you, you put it inside, you put it inside the turkey. Mm -hmm. So. Originally, the turkey represented, and they was making fun mm. of the North American Indians, how they killed them, mm. you know, and they went around and they started chopping off the Indian chief's heads mm. and, you know, kicking it around. That's where the game, what came from? Soccer. Mm. Okay, mm. they played around, kicked the Indian chief's heads around, made sides, made fun of it, tossed it around like a football. And mm. that's where mostly predominantly where the sports came from, from the demise of, of, of us, yeah. of mm. us, right? The demise yeah. of slaves and the demise mm. of taking over the North American Indians. And uh, this stuff holds true to today. Um, I'm gonna hit you one more fact too. Mm -hmm. um, during the time of slavery, I just found this out. Um, I just found this out uh, researching probably like about maybe five months ago. During slavery, um, in the, I would say, in the early part of slavery, um, in the 1600s and 1700s, because the 1800s started rolling around, they started incorporating the field slaves, some of them inside the house. But you get, listen to this point really good. They, the slaves weren't allowed inside the house, period. Mm -hmm. They wasn't allowed inside the house, right. period. Okay, um, but what they did, they had the slaves, they didn't even want the slaves inside the house doing nothing, cooking, yeah. you know, unless it had something to do with the black woman, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what they forced her to do other than that. But we was cooking all their food, mm -hmm. you know, we was doing everything. So that's where actually grilling came from mm -hmm. outside cooking mm -hmm. barbecuing that's actually where that mm -hmm. came from i'm gonna hit y'all with this too um a lot of people don't know even when you pull up mm -hmm. to a uh to a takeout that's where takeout came from because what yeah. we were doing back then taking we were the actually taking the food out and we were eating outside yeah mm -hmm. chef will prepare it come and go outside take it and take it and you got because because the slave masters wouldn't allow us in there so what we was doing right. we was taking the food out so a lot yeah. of times when you go to a restaurant and you got the food being taken out and that's where the term takeout food came from it mm -hmm. came from slavery a lot of people think that oh that just came about you know yeah. when corporation and restaurants no that term came from slavery when the slaves so next time when you in a restaurant the next time when you pull up to your favorite fast food think and you order it. something from that window right, right. Think, think about, about slavery. slavery and yeah. the white man didn't want us inside his that's house it. because that's, that's where it. they came from gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha i think it was uh one more book not just coincidence not just coincidence. yeah the one more that's the very last one okay that mm -hmm. that's a book actually that was my first book actually that's one of my best sellers um that's just a book that just pretty much just explains you know really pretty much predicates on how do we get this way you know mm -hmm. how you're going to capture a nation yeah. of people yeah. the greatest people on this earth you know and how do we come to the terms that we're at to this day mm -hmm. you know as far as like the credit debt system like you were talking right. about earlier like you know yeah. not to teach your kids how to save yes. money like how is it that you have the greatest minds on this earth how do we get controlled all of a sudden how did you know how you know is it that a, a, a person can actually a nation of people can actually come and take us over you know, it's just like me going into your house, mm -hmm. kicking you out, and then telling you to come back and okay, well, I'm charging you rent for it. Right. Exactly. That's exactly. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what the Europeans did to us. Right. You know, and that's what this is our country. Mm -hmm. How 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 are we the aliens? And how are we the immigrants? And how are we the foreigners? When 
They don't even belong here. Right. They came and took this country over from the Indians. So we got more of a right to be here because those are brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to call people far? I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. get that, Sister Richard. How are they going to call people foreigners and get out of here, you need a green card, right. when you came over here and it's stole so this land? Exactly. I don't understand that, right? Yeah. So now all of a sudden, now, you know, you're yeah. the foreigners, you need a green card, brother. You know, get on out of here, you need immigration mm -hmm. rights. But Columbus, as go far back. as I, yeah, right. go back, we can go back to Africa. <laughs> but as far as I remember, didn't Columbus, did he come over here mm -hmm. and, yeah. and steal this land mm -hmm. from the Indians and, you know, took mm -hmm. and, you know, so it, well. it, right, right. It was a black guy speaking to him. It was a black guy named Pedro Nino mm -hmm. that actually navigated Columbus. Columbus, they thought the world was flat mm -hmm. during that time. Yeah. So he had to actually get a black navigator from Spain mm -hmm. to actually coordinate the way over here to mm -hmm. America to the Indians. Because that was Pedro Nino. Here's a story he, behind that, brother. Right. He was he was uh, one of the few that were actually hitting the islands. Bingo. And then also going to South America. Bingo. Bingo. And Columbus yeah. just didn't come over here one time. Columbus actually made six trips all together over here. Mm -hmm. Columbus actually made a trip to Africa mm -hmm. and got some slaves also. So it just wasn't one time one that time Columbus deal. came over here. Now look, Pedro Nino, here's a fact. Columbus was so dirty, okay, and so grimy. I got like about maybe 50 or 60 books on Columbus. He, he, he was so diabolical and so evil. The, the brother Pedro Nino got navigated his way over here to America. And this is facts. This is in books. He navigated his way over here to America and Columbus was stealing, of course, the gold and mm -hmm. at the shores and, you know, they, they didn't have time and, they, you know, it was so much gold and jewelry that he stole mm -hmm. from the Indians. They had coin presses and mm -hmm. mints right there, mm -hmm. making them out of coins and, you know, just to Send them back to the ride, right, you know, mm -hmm. just to save space. Mm -hmm. And so what they did, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, it was so much gold, it was weighing the ships down. So what they did, okay, let's make a map. Okay, 25 knots over here, southwest. Okay, buried treasure. They still finding a lot of that treasure off mm -hmm. the coast of Florida today. Gold coins that was mm -hmm. minted, you know, by the Spanish. Like there you go, brother. The, the there blooms. you go. There you go. So he was so diabolical. You, you take one half. You take one half. We'll be back. And so rather than to give them, rather than to give the Indians the gold back, mm -hmm. you're gonna bury the gold, and you 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 gonna bury the gold from them. The gold that you stole, you are gonna bury the gold right. from them. Because okay, right. It. And 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 as an insult to injury. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 the gold used to weigh the ships down so much, they used to toss some of the toss gold over, the man. Yeah. They tossed yeah. most of the gold over. Just especially, give it back. Especially during uh, rough seas when the, the ship might have uh, tossed over. Yeah, uh, they was tossing yeah. a lot of slaves over, too. Yes, they were. Brother. Pedro Nino, uh, halfway back to Spain, Pedro Nino told Columbus, and this is facts, this was in a letter. He told, Col he told Columbus, one of the, six of the crew members, okay, during uh, the late 1400s, Columbus died in 1506. Late during the late 1400s, on the way back, he told six of the crew members, he said, um, if you stay on this route right here for the next maybe two days, don't venture off, don't do nothing, and you'll hit it. You'll hit Spain. Don't you know they murdered that brother, man? Wow. Don't you know when he showed them how to get back, they murdered that brother? Because Columbus thought that he was going to return back to America to get the gold, mm -hmm. from the rest of the gold from the Indians. That's a diabolical guy. That was a, I, I, I can spend another day or two just talking about the yeah. evil that he did yeah. all together, yeah. you know, but yet and still they have what? A Columbus, Columbus Day. Day. Exactly. Right? They got a Columbus Day. George Washington had yeah. slaves. Thomas yeah. Jefferson Day had yeah. slaves. Yeah. You can go to a certain part of North Carolina where they have a slave plantation called the Berry Hill Slave, slave Plantation. And in and around that area, they have places called uh, the Madison Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, Madison Theaters, mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Madison, James Madison Boulevard. But these people don't really know, yeah. okay, why do they have these, still have the street names, mm -hmm. you know, relegated. They just don't, they just, they don't know. Yeah. But it's named after the slave master. That, and Madison. a lot of towns are still named after yeah. certain slave masters. Yeah. Now people just don't know. Oh, you know, uh, George Washington High School, you've been to George Washington, but George Washington has slaves. Thomas Jefferson High mm -hmm. School, you know, and you just don't know. A lot of housing projects in New York City are named after slave masters as well too right, and right. a lot of people don't know that too because mm -hmm. why because they feel that we're still in slavery mm -hmm. you know slave quarters the projects it's right. slave quarters name it after thomas jefferson jefferson houses yeah. right. you know and our people walk out in and out every day and they just don't have a clue 
You're proud. Oh, I live in where you live. I'm from Jefferson Projects. Man. Right. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. You better not mess right. with me. I'm from Jefferson Projects. Right. You know, but it's named after your slave master. Let me yeah. believe Johnson as well, too. Wow, that is something else. So um, what new book projects do you have coming up? Do you have anything new coming up that you're working on? Yeah, actually I do. I'm working on a book right now <laughs> as we speak. It's, it's called the Intentional Terrorism on Blacks. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things and a lot of people don't understand that when you have a neighborhood in Philadelphia yeah. that was bombed, okay, you had 10 blocks that was bombed, black people lived there in that gentrification, mm -hmm. you know, either going to give us mm -hmm. these six, these 10 blocks right here, yeah. or we're going to bomb you, okay? Yeah. It's the same thing that they did, right. you know, back during the time of Philly, I think it was in 83, 85, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they had a plane, an American plane, mm -hmm. government plane come yeah. by and drop a bomb on right. a black neighborhood in Philly, mm -hmm. okay? That's terrorism. That, that, that's just modern day terrorism. That's yeah. all that is, yeah. okay? When you set up certain things in the black community, food poisoning, that's terrorism. Okay, it's just put in a different form. When you had the right. kids go get a flu shot and had strands of different diseases in that, that's terrorism, okay? When have you known a white man to give our people anything for free? I don't mm -hmm. understand. A flu shot is gonna make you better? Right, exactly. A flu shot, something yeah. to make you better? You mm -hmm. mean to tell me he charged you for aspirins in the store to get rid of oh, yeah. But he gonna give you a free flu, flu shot. shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right when you're young. Brother Anthony, come on, right. right. Bring your kids on in here. Get that free flu shot. And you got to have it. You got to go home. You, you got to have class. That's right. You got to get on up out of here. And black people, the kids, they get nervous. Oh, my goodness. I can't mm. keep my kids out of school. Mm -hmm. BCW going to come and take them. So what they try to do mm -hmm. is force you right, to, to take it. the shot. Mm -hmm. But there are people out here, okay, that can actually write you a letter saying that you don't, you know, take the I shot. And, right, right. You don't have to get it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Well, brother Frank, Frank, it's been great having you here. Hey, thank you, brother Anthony. It's been you a know, pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So tell me before it's you go, because I know there are some Absolutely. very, so very, you. very you. interested people out there. Yeah. How can they get in contact with you? What is your social media? Okay, you can uh, find me on Facebook. Um, you can actually um, look up uh, Frank Jordan, F-R-A-N-K, Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N. Um, or you can actually go and you can email me, uh, Zaquan1212 at yahoo.com that's z-a-a-q-a-n 1212 at yahoo.com or amazon.com you can go look up <laughs> right. you can books. look up right for my books right. uh, all your books there right. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. amazon amazon.com just printing just uh frank jordan f-r-n-k j-r-d-a-n or amazon.com Great. Awesome, Great. awesome. Thank you so much for all this knowledge, this understanding, some stuff that I didn't Thank know you for about. Having me. Thank you for mm -hmm. being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, because we, our people need to know. We need right. to know what we don't know. Absolutely. We need to know where to go uh, research and find out this information. Absolutely. I mean, if we don't have anyone letting us know this information, I mean, how do we know? Everyone, Urban Beats Radio 2, we definitely want you to go out and support Brother Frank here. Thank all you. right? So please do visit Amazon or get in contact with Brother Frank on uh, Facebook. Once again, Brother Frank, hey, thank, thank you. you so thank much. You, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. On Urban Beach Radio 2, each week we have a brand new set of shows. Uh, starting on Tuesdays at 6 p.m., we have Two Kings in a Pod with C. Will Holla and Blanchard. Uh, we also have Just Call Me Jane Nicole. She comes on at 3 p.m. On Wednesdays, we also have Old School Wednesdays where we mix it up with DJ Chaos. On Thursdays, we have I Could Be Wrong But I Doubt It. And on that show, we have Old Man Fresh and Reggie the underdogs and on Friday we have Sea Will Holla again with In My Mind Everybody Knows Chris and you also want to tune in for the men's show which is also Sea Will Holla and Jason Tyler the person and on Saturdays we have Jay Nicole just call me Jay Nicole at 3 p.m. again this episode of Urban Beats Radio 2 was brought to you by Whipple Tompkins Mobile Notary Service where notary service is fast and reliable available 24-7 you better get it. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Urban Beats Radio 2. Don't forget to visit our new YouTube channel, like us and subscribe to us, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember to get busy creating your world. <laughs>